Hello friends and welcome back to our homestead. Today I would like to share with you one of my recipes, one of the versions of cough syrups that I make here in a homestead. I have many different recipes and I have made cough syrups in the past and I posted that video and vitamin C drinks that I also posted and I'm going to list them in a description box so you can go below and click on them and watch them because we need to be prepared. Today is October 1st and you know what that means. That means the cold and cough season is right around the corner and we need to be prepared. I cannot tell you how many times I get texts and phone calls from my local friends saying, Lilia, please help. We've been coughing, my child is coughing, I've been coughing and nothing is helping. Or the pharmacy is closed. Or I don't want to use what's on the pharmacy shelves. I want to use something more natural. That means you have to be prepared. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. So let me show you all of the ingredients we're going to be using to make this version of cough syrup. So go online, go forage, get some of these herbs and make a syrup so you have it on hand at all times for the entire season because trust me, it's coming. So let's get prepared. So let's make it together, okay? And here are my ingredients. Very simple. Many of them we already have right in our kitchens, if you know what I mean. So the star of the show, funny enough, is actually going to be star of anise. Star of anise is actually what originally been used in Tamiflu. And then, you know, the pharmaceutical companies began to make a synthetic one. So star of anise stopped being used, but we're going to be using star of anise. And I just purchased some, making sure that it's nice and fresh and not old and expired. Then I'm going to be using dried elderberry. If you don't have it, please get some and have it on hand because pretty soon many herbal stores will run out of them and we're not going to have any. We also going to be using wild cherry bark and I have it at all times because it's a beautiful mucolytic antitussive for cough medicine is going to help us to calm those, you know, bronchial tree from coughing and mucolytic meaning is going to help us to move some of those secretions. Also, I'm going to be using oregano and this is beautiful oregano I'm running really low that means I have to go and um, collect some I have plenty of it growing I just have to dry it up and store it up then I'm going to be using some this is from a Russian store but you guys can buy it online it's called the rowan berries of rowan tree and this is what they look like when they're nice and dry I'll take them out of the package I'll show you and on the branch, they look like this. And we're supposed to harvest them late in the fall. But sometimes, guess what? The birds get to them before us because it's very high in vitamin C. And the birds also get to them and we don't have any left for us. So then we're going to be using honey. And I have some of our home harvested honey. So we're going to be using fresh honey and I'm not sponsoring any companies, but this is going to be brandy. I'm going to be using a little bit of brandy. You can omit it, but I will be using it. Why? Because brandy is really good to calm that cough down. It's not going to be very strong alcoholic drink. Trust me, it's going to be just a few tablespoons, but it really helps with the cough and it helps to preserve this so it doesn't go bad. All right, so let's start making. Oh, of course, we're going to need a jar where we're going to be storing it. And I always label this. And uh, things we're going to be mixing in. We're going to be needing some measuring cup. And then I'm also going to be using this is my herbal. Well, it's really uh, a coffee grinder, but I'm going to be using this. I only use it for herbs. I'm going to be um, actually break down some of these rowan berries because they're nitride dried rowan berries that need to be more pulverized to help to bring out the nutrients that's inside of it. And what else? I need a measurement spoon. That's one of the things I forgot. So let's start making it. I'll show you how I make it. Okay, we're going to start with three of this beautiful star of anise. So that's what we're going to be. Let me just open it. It's fresh, fresh one I just purchased. They're very fragrant, beautiful stars. So I'm gonna take three of them, just like this. 
they're gonna go in the pot okay actually no they're gonna go in here first because I need to break them up a little bit in my coffee grinder or in my spice grinder okay <laughs> They're gonna help to release more of their volatile oils right in here. Okay, so the star of anise is here. Then I'm gonna be adding wild cherry bark. And wild cherry bark, I'm gonna need quarter of a cup. Quarter of a cup. Oh, I forgot. I need a full quarter of a cup. All right, so I need a measurement. Quarter of a cup of cherry bark. That I am also going to throw in into my coffee and my spice grinder, okay? To also kind of break it up a little bit to bring out all that nice aroma out of it. The spice grinder is really helpful when it comes to making all my herbal preparations. All right, so they're here as well. Then I'm gonna be adding one full cup of dried elderberry, elderberries, okay? A one full cup. And guess what? I am not gonna break them up. I'm not gonna break them up because we wanna make sure that we don't break any of those seeds up. All we need is just the juice from these berries and the seeds are gonna stay intact and we're going to discard them. We don't need them, all right? So one cup of elderberry. All right, next I'm gonna be using um, dried oregano, dried oregano. And for that, I'm gonna be also using one quarter of a cup, all right? just like this. This I'm not gonna be pulverizing, it's already dried and crumbled up. So I'm gonna put that here in as well. What else, what else? I think, I think that's it for my herbs. I think that's it. I almost forgot about the rowan berries, goodness gracious. So I'm just gonna put them in a jar from this plastic container from the bag that I bought them from. And let's measure out also a quarter of a cup of rowan berries. A little bit more, I need a little bit more here. All right, that's about right. I'm also gonna put them in here, okay? And it's kind of just break it up a little bit because the berries and the bark always is easier if it's broken up, then it will release more, more of this med medicinal properties. So now I'm gonna be adding to all of this two cups of clean filtered water. In our case, in our case, we have well water, but I always like to use a very clean, unchlorinated, unfluoride water when making any kind of medicine. And it's gonna go on a stove and we're gonna start cooking it. As I'm cooking it, I'm gonna make sure that everything is nicely incorporated and I'm gonna be cooking this for the next half an hour with the cover on because I don't want any of these beautiful vapors with medicinal, with medicine it to escape. So I'm gonna put a cover on and it's gonna cook for the next half an hour. When it comes to a boil, it's gonna simmer nice and slow. Okay, so this has been cooking now for 30 minutes for half an hour. And now we need to extract all this goodness from here. It's boiling hot, so we gotta be careful, okay? We can wait a minute or two for just to cool down a little bit. Okay, so all of these berries absorbed lots of liquid and we need to extract them out. So what I'm gonna be using here is a French press that I have. It's a coffee maker, really. So I'm gonna Pour this in here. Let me get a spoon. 
I'm going to, oops, making a mess. I'm going to put this all on here. Hopefully it fits. It's supposed to fit, but we'll see. Okay, all of this in here. I may have to do in a separate batch. All right, and I'm going to apply this French press. And I'm going to slowly squeeze it down to push all of the solids down. Okay. And we're going to be pouring this all out into this clean jar. It's very dark, very concentrated. So even though, remember how I used two cups of water? Well, because all these berries absorb, let me push it more, they absorbed a lot of that liquid. Okay, let me put the rest in here. All right, let me put the rest in here and squeeze it all out, all that goodness out. All right, that's good. Okay, let's, let's squeeze it out. Push, 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 push. Then I'll pour it all out. Let me try a little bit more. All right, for the most part, all of the syrup, it's not syrup, it's a liquid, is all out and needs to cool off a little bit before I add honey. How much honey? You will notice that it's about one cup here of liquid left. So that means I have to put the same amount of honey. All right, let me cool this off, clean up here a little bit. All right, so this has been sitting here cooling off for a few minutes. And now I'm going to be adding my raw honey. And since I have one cup of this juice here, I'm going to be adding about one cup of raw honey. And this is our own raw honey that we have harvested this season. It's a beautiful honey we have here from our homestead. So it's going to go here as well, just like this. It's beautiful. And stir everything together. Nice. Stir it in. And the last thing, we're gonna be adding brandy. And this is optional, but I like to add it because when somebody has strong cough, a little brandy will not hurt them. So to this amount, uh, which is a quite large amount, I'm gonna be adding six tablespoons of brandy. And brandy can be of your choice. And we'll stir everything up. I think one more. Hopefully I didn't lose count. <laughs> We're going to stir everything up. And we have cork syrup ready to go. This can be stored in the fridge if you want to. But because I added alcohol, I will not. It's going to be in my apothecary closet where I keep all of my medicines. And whenever somebody needs it, we can use as little as a teaspoon or a tablespoon every three to four hours. And um, I mean, of course, if you have contraindications or if pregnant, I don't recommend using this, but this can be used for children and adults as needed for cough to help you to get a nice restful sleep. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So friends, I hope you are encouraged to make your own syrups. Get few herbs that are important for cough and cold and flu season ready on hand, make some cough syrups and other medicines and be ready so you're not relying on driving in the middle of the night to get some cough medicine in case you need it. So friends, be encouraged and try something new.